G'day guys, welcome back to True Eagle. Today I had a little bit extra time, so I thought I'd come up with one more video prior to the Bulldogs game to uh, just talk a little bit about the Eagles, in particular selection. So I want to cover off selection, uh, the players that did get picked, the players that didn't get picked, uh, and also just comment on a few things Michael Malthouse has said. So we have one confirmed change. Harry Barnett comes out for Jack Williams. I think this was the right move, uh, and I did say this already. You know, I, I didn't think Barnett was ready. Um, I think Simo outwardly says that Barnett wasn't quite ready for four quarters, so I didn't quite like the risk that selection kind of had. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see Williams back into the team. I think he's earned it. Um, I think Simo said he kicked four goals and took 10 marks last week. I'm not sure if that's 100% correct. I thought it was reported he kicked three. So it's nice to see us have get to a point where players are earning selections for the waffle. And Jack Williams is the first example of that in a while. To quote Simpson, he says he's improved from last year, Jack Williams. He played before he was quite ready just through circumstances, a bit of last man standing stuff. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So if you remember last year, Jack Williams ruptured his spleen, I think either early in the season or in the preseason. And then if you told me then that from the position he was in as a player to come back and play seven games or whatever it was at the back end of last year and look pretty decent is a monumental achievement. So to hear that Simo's backing him in and saying that he's improved, that's great. He does look like visually bigger. And I'm optimistic. I never really placed big expectations on Jack Williams as a long-term prospect. I think anytime like a 198 centimeter player gets drafted at pick 52, it's kind of just like, yeah, hope for the best and expect very little. But I think he should be very proud of what he's been able to produce so far and is now looking like a pretty likely type at AFL level. To fact, the fact that he's earned his spot back into this team with a bit more competition, um, I think has me excited for this game. It really does. And uh, yeah, it's it's weird getting excited for games when obviously the club's not in a great position. But, uh, you know, I do like the balance of youth that we've got on the team. You know, there's a lot of prospects I'm excited to see develop. And Jack Williams is one of them. And, and he's also at the point where I think he kind of comes in and structurally makes his team better. So very positive on that. Obviously, I had uh, earmarked Clay Hall as a potential debut. Obviously, uh, not even mentioned. And uh, again, no idea to what extent he's ready for AFL level. But, you know, I, I am positive about you know where the waffle team's at i think again searching for positives in, in a bleak environment right now but at the same time like the benefit of having 10 or 11 eagles in that waffle side means that the games will be a lot more competitive we might even win some perform pretty well in the preseason you know a couple of big wins against you know weakened opposition that's fine but uh, i am looking forward to that i'm looking forward to see how a midfield of Zane True and Clay Hall go together. And Jai Cully's, you know, a week away from playing in the waffle. I think Andrew Gaff will play there this week. I definitely think it was a right call not to bring Gaff back. I did see a massive overreaction from fans. The fact that he was named on the extended bench, well, that was also true last week and he didn't play. Don't get me wrong, I would have complained on this channel had Gaff come back in. I think, uh, I don't mean that as a, as a shot at Andrew Gaff but in particular. It's just that 29 possessions, being one of the best on ground in a pre-season waffle game, let alone a waffle game, it would have been wrong to bring him back and it would have sent the wrong message as well so overall I'm, I'm happy with the changes structurally I think we're in a good spot also I don't want to get ahead of myself touch wood but like the, the number of players that are returning over the next fortnight is really positive Harry Edwards should return to the waffle I think Sheed is either next weekend or the week after that same thing with Liam Ryan and they even said Matthew Flynn's not too far away which is incredible that last one could be fake news I'm not even 100% sure where I read it but he might be closer than was originally reported so oh forgive me I've just read my notes I copied and pasted where I got it from it's flying not Flynn my mistake so Flynn is still a while away but Liam Ryan Dom Sheed Jai Cully back into the waffle I am satisfied at the moment about the shape of the best 22 like from a selection point of view um you know normally we all have some sort of complaints oh I wish it was a little bit different I think I think I'm happy with the both the structure the balance of old and experience I've talked about how I think Darling is probably you know a couple of bad performances away from being dropped but I, I think he should stay in the side now and that leads me to some comments from uh Mick Malthouse now the, these were well-intended comments I'm not trying to uh pick it apart, but I thought it would be an interesting discussion anyway. Now, disclaimer, Mick Malthouse knows way more about football than I will ever learn, but he's come up with a suggestion that we should switch Jeremy McGovern and Jack Darling in terms of their positions. Get Jack Darling to play key back and Jeremy McGovern. He's come up with, with an idea as an outsider. And again, I'm not firing a shot and I don't know anywhere near as much about footy as Michael Mulhouse, but I gotta say, I, I kind of hate this. I think it's a terrible idea. I think it's a terrible idea and I'll give my opinion on why. Let's start with the darling side of things. I don't think he's suited to play behind the ball, to be honest, you know, Mulhouse descri describes him as quick and that is definitely true when he was drafted, but I don't really recall too many times seeing darling 
demonstrating that pace towards the end of his career. Maybe he just hasn't had the opportunity. But there's also the aerial game, right? So if you're going to throw Darling behind the ball, assuming he even is quick enough, let's just say he is. You do need to be quick to play that role. But, you know, a lot of Darling's best work in the forward 50 is not so much like in the aerial game. It's not as though he's flying high for marks and clunking them. He's not rising above and marking the ball at the highest point. There's a reason we've played Oscar Allen behind the ball because he does play like that. Darling doesn't. I feel like Darling's more likely to wrestle someone and just get in front position and take a mark. He's not well suited to like an intercept spoiling game. I just, I can't see Darling being suited to that. But that's only half the equation because Jeremy McGovern has been one of our best players in the D50. And further to that, not only will we be robbing our best defender at the moment out of the back line and chucking him forward, we have done this before with Jeremy McGovern. And with all due respect, he is just not a good forward. Now, he's a great mark. Absolutely. A good contested mark. But at the same time, there are many different types of marks. And the marks that he takes are not really the same sort of marks that are going to be available in the forward line. And let me clarify what I mean by that. McGovern is brilliant at what he does. But what that is, is kind of almost being able to zone off and play a little bit looser. And being able to come up as the extra man of the contest and take a massive intercept mark. That is completely different to being able to take, you know, marks on the lead, for instance. I don't remember McGovern ever doing that. He is not going to find the same space to be able to run and jump at the ball like he does in the back line when he's in the forward line. I also don't recall him being a particularly effective set shot. He's actually a pretty good field kick. I'll give him credit for that. But bottom line is, I, I just think there's so many arguments against making this positional change that I thought it was worth mentioning. And the, probably the strongest one of all is the fact that we need McGovern in the back line. Like Tom Barras hasn't had a great year. I think he had a good second half against GWS, but he's struggling. Like I don't think we line up with Darling and, and Brass, particularly against the tall power of uh, the Bulldogs forward line. So leading on to this game, you know, I, I'm again, I, I think it's just nuffy Eagles fan. As the week progresses, as you start to forget exactly how the first two weeks went, I've started to become increasingly optimistic, but I've got this like cognitive dissonance. Like I believe in two things at once right now with regards to this Bulldogs game. I have this feeling we're going to play well. Like I said, I, I've thought about, you know, why we play well at Marble. I think it does seem to be a smaller ground. And therefore, maybe the, the opportunities to just chop us up on transition isn't the same as what it would be at other grounds. That being said, the SCG is a pretty small ground, and uh, yeah, we all know what happens there. So I don't know if there's any science to that. I just have this feeling we're going to play well. I've got a feeling that we're going to get more inside 50s than we usually do. I've got a feeling that Harley Reid's going to have his best career game to date. I reckon he's going to kick a goal. I'm just feeling it. At the same time, I think the Bulldogs are also going to be very good in this game. And I just have this feeling one of their tall forwards is going to kick an absolute bag on us. And I've got a feeling it's going to be Sam Darcy. I don't know. These are just meaningless pregame thoughts. Not to, not too much to sink your teeth into. But what I could easily see happening in this game is that we we look better with the ball in hand. We, we create more opportunities. We score more. But I also think there's a good chance that uh, one of their forwards gets a hold of us and we could play better and still lose by eight goals. I feel like it's going to be one of those sorts of games, but I'm excited. Me getting excited for Eagles games is never going to change, uh, nor should it. One last little bit, a little bit about Elijah Hewitt. Uh, he has flown to Melbourne, I think on Wednesday to undergo surgery. So that, that surgery is finally happening. He will be expected to return after the mid-season bye. So that's obviously frustrating. I think he's close to our best young talent and uh, obviously we want to see him back in his side, but it's a shame as well. Like you want to be taking these opportunities to get games into players but uh, one thing that gave me a little bit of solace was I recently started working on a Luke Shuey Classic Eagles video and you realise as well that Shuey didn't play in his first season he played six games in his second and then was unbelievable in his third season the point being that like him not playing in his first two seasons didn't necessarily prevent him from having an explosive breakout year in his third so you know Hewitt will come back hopefully with a bit of fitness if he if he plays like six to eight weeks in the waffle and then comes back for the last month at AFL, that's obviously optimistic. There's still a lot of growth he can get from that. So yeah, I'm feeling feeling good. I'm feeling good and I'm going to allow myself to feel good until the game. But let me know in the comments how you guys are all feeling. No matter what happens this week, I'm already dreading the Sydney game. But uh, as always, I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.